What's up? I got this hat from my friend. My friend made me this hat and I really like it because it's in my favorite color, but um, it kind of makes me look like that. Cut. Enough of that. Stop that. New scene. Do it topless. Action. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I was telling them about my new hat. Ah, 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 ah. New scene. <laughs> Praise Chavez in his glory. <laughs> don't forget the top of this action. Who gave <laughs> you that? Who gave you that? I don't remember, but I found it when I was looking for Halloween decorations. And uh, I'll add in things next time so it'll say things. What did, what did Kanye ah, West ah, say? Ah, ah. What did Kanye say? No one man should have all that power. Right. Nobody, nobody should have given you that. And end of that conversation. <laughs> We're done You're with that. You're done. <laughs> we are here for more Internet Historian. The first one was about theater. This one's about painting. Yes. It's in the same vein of things. Right. Do you think he's going to talk about Picasso? Of course he's going to talk about Picasso. Okay, he's who He's going to talk about Rembrandt. Oh, Rembrandt. Right. Is he going to talk about that one guy whose paintings are like all over the place, but apparently he's like a bad person? Uh, Thomas Kincaid. What a good fucking name. Yeah. That's a good one. Apparently he's a terrible person. All right, let's get into it. NordVPN isn't like the other girls. <laughs> Hello, incognito it? mode videos now. All right, so the schedule for this okay. mini-series goes like this. Okay. We did the main channel on theater, okay. then an incognito mode on painting, okay. which is this. Then there's a main channel on wine, right. and then an incognito mode on a bunch of stories around wine. Nice. Okay. And there's a main channel on things that people wear. There's a main channel on luxury goods, Boom. and then we round the whole thing off with two more incognito wow. modes. Boom. And then I go back into cryostasis. All right. <laughs> He's not gonna follow the schedule. This is not, this is the schedule. This is not the schedule. No, this I, you know what? <laughs> I have the utmost faith. For, for the record, it's utmost, not upmost. To who? A lot of you guys be saying upmost. Not it's only, not upmost, not it's only, utmost. Not only is it upmost, <laughs> it is also up yours. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I have the utmost faith in him. Now, do I think he's going to stick to this schedule and that we so will I not took... hear from him oh. for like four years? You think he's going to do it and then just delete the channel, yeah, basically. Yeah, a la Samonella. I'm, Absolutely. I'm telling you right now, he's at, the wine video is halfway done right now. Uh -huh. The drinking video is finished. Uh -huh. He's got a ton right. of stories about drinking. <laughs> that shit's done. And the other ones are not even started. This is not going to happen. This first section is on the basics of painting. And we were a little bit worried to show it because we we kind of felt like this will split the audience. Why? But not because it's political or anything, uh -huh. but because it's so basic. <laughs> oh. So someone who already right. knows something about art would be like, yeah, of course, <laughs> why are you telling me this? But for someone like me, who knows practically <laughs> zero about art, I found it really interesting and I thought, why the heck haven't I been told this before, right? <laughs> you have. You just weren't paying attention. <laughs> I guarantee you, you have. First section. All right, All right here we go. Basics of painting. Action! The oh. arts. Nice. The arts. Oh. Do not put an F in front of that worst <laughs> mistake I ever made in my life. <laughs> All right, first, some things that'll make you go, yeah? And, or, oh, okay, right. Okay, okay. So look at this colorful goo. Yeah. That's paint. Paint. <laughs> Delicious in both the jam <laughs> and chip form. Mm. But its raw components are just two essential things. An undissolving pigment mm -hmm. and a medium. Right. Now, pigments are basically just colorful dust. Yeah. And the medium is the liquidy thing that the dust hangs out in. Right. Now, the liquid determines what type of paint you have. Oh, my God. <laughs> my brain is going to bake. He wasn't kidding. I thought it was a joke. I was ready to commence the joke. Gosh, think of shit. I'm going to explain to you how paint works for your dumb asses. You've been eating it for long enough. Okay, but some people don't know how paint works. You know, the, like these children nowadays, this is fine. I just, these kids nowadays, they didn't have a real art classes. They did their art classes on tablets. Pigment plus water equals watercolors. Water yeah. Pigment plus glue equals acrylic. Oh. Pigment plus oil equals oil paint. Thank you. So simple. And pigment plus 
Moving on. Now, <laughs> the pigment does not dissolve into the medium. Instead, it's just kind of suspended in it. So when the pigment bad. does dissolve into a medium, that's a dye. Oh, okay. Shut up, Jacqueline. I've Hold never on. considered the difference. Just... So that's the basic difference. Now, you have to transfer the paint onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. To do that, we need to talk tools. He closed it. Well, My first, God. you can just use your fingers. Ew. It was good enough for the cavemen, and it's good enough for your mom. So it's good enough <laughs> for us. <laughs> then we tried brushes. Now, here is the anatomy of a brush. You've got the handle, the bristles, the ferrule, and That's the crimp. I didn't know that. Okay. Now, the bristles are the most important the bit. First, we were please. just using mangled up reeds called fronds. Mm. But they got really good once we started using animal hair. Have a look at some of the animals we used. Boar, taken from the neck or the back of the pig. That is the kind of brush that Van Gogh used. And it's still the gold standard for today. A goat brush. It's good, but it's not the goat. Lacks some spring. So it's mostly used for calligraphy. Badger. That's cool. Now that's actually mostly used for shaving, not painting at all. Horse, raccoon, and wolf. Also not great quality. But what's the worst quality of all? You know, Human. the gutter oil of the brush world. Yeah. Well, the worst quality is camel hair ah. brushes. And they're mostly sold as arts and crafts brushes for kids. But the weird thing is, camel hair is so low quality that it's not even used in brushes at all. <laughs> huh? Yes, so-called camel hair brushes are actually made from cats and rabbits what? and squirrels. What? Oh, my God. oh my God! Oh my God! What the fuck? But that makes people kind of sad. So they changed the name to a much less cute animal and also one that's kind of exotic, so you wouldn't question it. Now, what's the best brush of all? What is the S tier of brushes? Those are made from sable. Oh no! Oh God, this, of course. 10 out of 10. Now, oh. sable is a type of weasel. Yeah. These are hunted for their fur for clothing. Right. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's him. But when they catch them to make clothes, they actually only want the body for the clothes. And so they discard the tail altogether. Damn. But those tails have the best hair for paintbrushes. And so they are snatched up by the brush makers. Now, the hair is special because it has an interlocking scales that vastly increases the surface area. But it also holds strong in the long term. Firm and bouncy, but also soft. It's smooth, <laughs> it bounces, it moves. Only with new Tresemme Keratin Smooth. That's good. And they that sell really for good. upwards of $300 oh, oh a Oh my lord. Okay. That, see, that picked up. I know for you it would have been way better if instead of kicking a squirrel, it would have been a raccoon. Thank you for that. I really appreciate <laughs> you bringing that up. And she's right. I would have... I know you shit. were just watching the squirrel like why couldn't it have been no, the I, bro I was training thieving in RuneScape old school RuneScape because yeah. I'm a nerd right. and they told me the pet for that that you could get is a raccoon <laughs> I stopped instantly I stopped instantaneously <laughs> I stopped immediately alright here's a top 10 list sort of maybe watch mojo style of the most famous paintings and just a few okay. interesting things about them that you may not know Starry Night pop quiz sports shoe wearer Look at this painting. Ah. What does it make you feel? <laughs> Too late. <laughs> or if you answered in time, wrong answer. Damn. Happy, sad. I bet those are the only two emotions you even know. <laughs> the correct answer is shame, because shame. you are embarrassing yourself. <laughs> you know nothing about the art. Really so it us. is time to look at the best paintings oh, to ever exist. And let's begin with the most obscure of them all. Whoever this is. He jumped in it. Oh, Wait, that was great. Oh, the, uh, is, the Mona the Lisa. That's so cool. Now, I thought it went first name Mona, last name Lisa. Check it out. But it turns out Mona is an honorific, mm -hmm. meaning madam. So it's Madam Lisa. Yes. Thanks. Now, relatively recently, historians have figured out who she actually is. Oh, really? And they found out that she's married to a Florentine merchant, Francesco del Giacondo. So that makes her Lisa del Gioconda. And that explains the alternative title of the work, La Gioconda. What? Nobody ever talks about an alternative 
alternative title for the Mona Lisa? That was hard that he brought that up. That was hard. What? That was hard. Nobody ever in. talks about that. He is going in with this video. This is so dope, actually. And also, I love that he's taking the textured versions of all these paintings. Yeah. It gives me so many feels. When we when I took you to your first music mm -hmm. uh, art installation. Yes. Um, that was one of the things I kept pointing out, you know, talking about the types of brush strokes they use. Brush strokes, the canvases. Yes, very particular choices. It makes it a, a really fun thing to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Now the reason she has her arms crossed and is a little bit chubby is because she's pregnant. Right. In fact, you can kind of see that she's wearing a veil and that particular type of veil was worn by pregnant women at okay. the time. Uh, her husband cover them up because they're turning ugly. What a smart <laughs> decision by the people in the past. Husband commissioned the painting when Da Vinci was already yes. well known, so it would have been very expensive. And that makes it very funny for a couple of reasons. One, it was never handed over to the family. <laughs> Instead, Leo left it in his will to his apprentice. Oh. And two, because for a couple of hundred years, the prevailing theory was that she was not an aristocratic wife, mm. but instead a prostitute. <laughs> oh my God. Her hair being down and her almost absent eyebrows were common traits of working girls oh. at the time. Anyway, why is this painting so famous? Well, Da Vinci was already pretty famous and the painting got stolen. Oh. This became a very big news story and her face suddenly started getting plastered on a whole bunch of newspapers mm. and wanted posters, making her very recognizable. From there, she became the most famous painting. Which is why she always looks so smug. <laughs> Starry Night. That's Vincent my, Van Gogh. Yeah. yeah, I sure hope it does. <laughs> Painted while he was in the St. Paul de Musol Asylum. That's here. And this was the view from his bedroom window. Here is the real view a few decades later. Dang. He chose not to paint the metal bars. <laughs> now, you can see that there are 11 stars in the sky here. Supposedly, that's reference to Joseph from the Bible. Oh. Joseph, he had a hard life. The minivan, so he had a hard life too. <laughs> and he hoped that he would be remembered at least once he was gone. Mm -hmm. Like Joseph. And you know what? It worked out for him because everybody remembers Van Gogh and nobody remembers the guys who bullied him and called him a that's ginger. A fact. Also, there's kind of a theory that he was killed by some kid. Go check out Wendigoon's what? channel for more information what on that one. What did you just say to me? Ah, the birth of Venus. Oh, I forget about this one. All right, let me tell you what's happening in this Okay. One. So, there's this lady, Venus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She is the goddess of beauty. Uh -huh. And she is coming up out of the ocean yeah. in a big clam. Got right? it. Now, the clam is not a metaphor for her vagina. It's that she is the perfect pearl. Uh -huh. Get it? Okay. Now, these two here are a divine wind. They are blowing her like a hot spoonful of soup towards the shore. <laughs> and she is carried all the way over to the beach. That, and this beach, is by the way, is a real place called Paphos. It's in Cyprus. Here is what it looks like in real life. It's beautiful. Now, when she arrives on the beach, a nymph shows up, which is this lady here, and she has a cloak. And she oh, throws cloak, the cloak whatever. over Venus and she says... You know what? You're very special. One day they're gonna name a four-blade razor <laughs> after you. Arrangement in black and grey number is one. one of my favorite Also favorites. known as Whistler's Mother. Yeah. Most famous for its appearance in the Mr. Bean movie. Now, you when Whistler's yeah. Mother originally agreed to be painted, she agreed to be painted standing up. But she had to pose for so long that eventually she got quite tired and had to sit down. Damn. There you go. And that became the famous pose. The Garden of Earthly Delight. Mm -hmm. All right, this one is probably my favorite because it looks like a Where's yeah. Waldo, <laughs> and the whole thing just goes Don't completely off the rails. Yeah. So, Mr. Hieronymus, that's a name that's going to make a comeback, is doing all of this cool, surreal stuff about 500 years ago. So let's start on the left. Here is Adam and Eve and the pre-incarnation of Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And they are all hanging out in the Garden just of Earth. Just What's going on in the middle bit? That's... Harder to explain. <laughs> the best theory is either the that this is Eden, if people were allowed back into the garden, or if they had never left in the first place, or if man had not committed original sin. Man and a but look at the size of that strawberry. Ah, damn. Oh, here he is. Stupid. Then on the right hand panel is hell. Yeah. Or at right. least a very bad time. This is where Oddlaw would end up. <laughs> that son of a bitch. At least. So there, right here you see the man, right? Mm -hmm. Inside the men are the the men in the cave from the cave story in mm -hmm. the in the 
whatever we call it. Right. The barrel, I can't remember what that is. And then that far thing to the left with the guy on the key is like a representation of a real torture device they would use. Oh, my God. Uh, the rats eating people, another torture device we would really use. Right, I know that. A fake real torture device in the uh, Iron Maiden. Yeah. And also his legs, the roots, that's supposed to be like realistic somehow for something. Mm -hmm. But then it's like growing into his body. Yeah. And I know some people are thinking like, oh, the horns of some animals where the horn grows into their body and kills them slowly. Right. Kind of like as a man of torture or whatever. Yeah. A very bad time. This is and where Oddlaw would Oddlaw. end up. That son of a bitch. Right. Now, here's the interesting bit. It's not painted on a typical canvas. It's actually a sort of cabinet thing with three panels right. called a triptych. And the neat thing is, if you close the doors, more painting. That is the earth, and that is the firmament. Mm -hmm. A perfect balance between flat earth and globe theory. <laughs> a Sunday he afternoon on the island of La Grange. This is a great painting as well. It's like the little dotty one. Yeah. And those people are walking a monkey. They are. Yeah. This thing is pretty big. It's huge. And here's the real life place it was painted Beautiful. after. Although they've beautified it even more with the office building at the back. <laughs> yeah. What you may not know is that it is actually a sequel. First, oh, George okay. Surratt painted the left bank, and that's where all the working class sit. And you see these guys that, you know, they have poor. a bit less money yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Gross. And then this is the one that you all know, and that is on the right-hand right. bank. And all these people are a very bougie sort. That is scrappy dude, And that... That's a monkey. It's a monkey! The Last Supper. Yes. That's a great, okay. another great one. So the scene is this. All the disciples are gathered around, and this is the exact moment that Jesus declares, Hey, by the way, I know one of you betrayed me. And this is everyone's shocked reaction to the news. Except there's one guy who's just pretending to be shocked. <laughs> and here is who everyone is. What I think of with this is how somebody recreated this with dogs with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was Mary, by the way. Turns out that's here is who everyone is. Thank you. I thought this was Mary, by the way. Turns out that's John. Oh. Very progressive. Okay. And that's all of the paintings, and no one has attempted one since. <laughs> Boom. The end. All oh, right. Okay. I'm kind of disappointed. And I wake up. Quickly, flip the Nord logo, Mariana Stretch. Flip it the other way, three pyramids. <laughs> nice, <laughs> actually. <laughs> There's not much time. I've got to log into NordVPN so the corporations can't track me. Marketing companies oh. gang stalking me, listening to me through the walls. <laughs> we found the death note. We found the death note. <laughs> Wake up again. I don't have much time. The feds are at my door. Oh, yeah. I refuse to take my Nord milk pills. <laughs> I wake up again. The demon in the corner of my room wants to access my Nord milk pills. Hello? Hello? I let him, because I can use it on up to six different devices. Oh my God. Thanks, Lord Man. <laughs> I know the corporations are building profiles on me. I go to Facebook, I go to Wikipedia, then suddenly oh I'm getting ads for feet on my Facebook. Big feet, big foot, big farmer. Oh, nice. On Tuesday, I saw a red car. Coincidence? <laughs> Huge deal on a two year plan, plus four <laughs> bonus months, four sides to a triangle. What is this Coincidence? Mean? There's a guy reacting to my life in the corner right now. 30 day money back guarantee? What's the what goddamn is? catch? Time's what? going faster than usual, and only a limited time to get a great deal on a two year plan. I wake up again. It's the perfect Christmas present. Who are you? Wait a minute. My family died in a suspicious house fire. Oh, Skinwalker my in my house. God. Change location to Finland. Different regions have different prices on plane tickets and hotels. That ain't even a conspiracy. I take more microplastics so I can see through the ether. <laughs> Pizza time. But they're too late. <laughs> I click Hyperborea and I am untouchable. What? If you understood anything that happened in this ad, go to nordvpn.com slash incognito. It's just like a, a team of editors losing it behind the scenes, bro. I, I feel like that's what an acid trip is like. They, they hear the party goes, time is moving faster than usual. <laughs> and they're like riffing on ideas. The guy's like, just put a fucking watch on his wrist and let's move on, right. please. I like how the last ad was like super chill. It was very like, tame. Like super tame. And then this ad, he was like, all of the things. <laughs> bro, like, why is it four sides to a triangle? <laughs> I was like, bro, one, two, three, the middle. <laughs> the middle's a side. All right, so this one is about how to spot a fake painting. Okay. I quite like this section, but it kind of got bogged down by all of its technical information. All right. And it went quite long. I'm ready. So here it is. 
for the discerning audience. Sure. How to spot a fake painting. <laughs> glug, glug, Ew. glug. Oh yeah. my god. Is that a real Michelangelo? Michelangelo. Real quick, what are the names of the Ninja Turtles? It's Michelangelo, Raphael. Lee Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> I realized recently that I don't know their names except for Michelangelo and Raphael. Michelangelo, Raphael. Uh, what are the colors? It's orange, red, blue. blue pur purple. Is purple. Is that yeah, it? I think so. I thought, I thought you would know. Why would I know that? I just thought you would know. I didn't grow up with the Ninja Turtles. Me either, bitch. Damn. Kinda. What's wrong with you? How old do you think I am? We're here now. Quick hypothetical lower tax brackets. If paintings like this one or this one go for literally gajillions of dollars, mm -hmm. that's USD, then what's to stop someone from doing this? Then this. They literally do. And then this. <laughs> then this. And then saying it's real. Right. When it ain't. Art experts. You know, faking a painting. Turns out, not much right. at all. Yeah. In fact, it can be very difficult to tell these fake ass paintings <laughs> from the ones that keep it real. Damn. There's a whole ass art to detecting these Ew. fakes. And it's become an arms race, mm -hmm. where the authenticators find new ways of detecting and the fakers find new ways to get around their methods. Right. Technology's advanced. Do you think that makes it harder to make good forgeries? No, nah, you can beat the forensics. So, <laughs> authentication. Yeah. There are three main categories. Provenance, connoisseurship, forensics. Okay. Let's start in alphabetical order. Provenance. You son of a bitch. Now, provenance follows the history of the painting, tracking down the previous sellers mm -hmm. and the buyers, all the galleries that exhibited it, the hand-to-hand -hand that it was passed through, all the way back to the original painter. Makes sense. However, the older the work, the harder it is, generally, to track the provenance. Right. Take, for example, the most expensive painting ever sold. The Salvatore Mundi, so the final Da Vinci, mm. sold in 2017 for $400 million. Ooh, and it can only be traced back to 1958. What? Back then, it was sold for 45 pounds. Damn! But in the other 500 years of its history, no one knew where this thing was. Oh. Even today, people still dispute whether it's genuine. I think it's a real flim flam. <laughs> and this <laughs> is a made up piece of junk. Oh. I think it's fake art news. Okay. Real <laughs> in drag. Then it ends up in America? In New Orleans? Oh, I see. I think we've <laughs> missed <laughs> this Da Vinci into existence. Here's the lost Leonardo that somebody once mentioned in a book. Provenance has gotten a lot easier over time. You used to have to track oh, down God. books and read catalogs and stuff, That's but so now funny. it's all online. Control plus F, there it is. <laughs> so you see, kid, there's nothing online. Nothing. Tell me who you bought this from, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Where did you get this? Tell me the name of the auction house that sold you it. Connoisseurship. Okay. Look at the work. Do you believe what you are seeing? How does it look? How does it taste? Ew. Are these ballpoint pen strokes those of a master artist? Luckily, there are people like Martin Kemp, mm -hmm. who spend their whole careers focusing on single artists. I've been dealing with Leonardo for... I suppose it's about 50 years. They can pick out the fakes. So, for example, when he was looking at La Bella Principessa, he went, yep, he uses the Trois Crayon. He's a left-handed artist. The proportions of the head and the face are all correct. Okay. You know what? Wow. I'm going to give this a big rubber stamp right there in the middle of the Hell painting. Yeah. Confirmed. Exactly what we want. 
want. So, for the fakers, they have to have a keen understanding of who they are copying. Right. One of the best fakers, Almir Dahore, for example, mastered the brushstrokes of artists such as Matisse, Mogdiliani, and Renoir so well that hundreds of museums are currently in possession <laughs> of his works oh my God. without yeah. even knowing. Oh my God. Yes, well, Michelangelo was famous for his Congiante painting techniques, uh -huh. and I can't see any of that here. You're zero for two, kid. You're going down. You're going down. Forensics. Oh, my God. This thing's going straight to the lab. You're about to have a paint brush up with yeah. the law. Masterpiece. More like you're a real yeah. masterpiece. <laughs> 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 All right, now the people that solve murders have really changed the game when it comes to art forgeries by implementing radiocarbon dating. Oh. Radiocarbon dating. Carbon dating? Yeah, but it's not serious. Hmm. Listen, you're made out of carbon. I'm made out of carbon. Okay. Paintings are made out of carbon. Okay. And when a thing is made out of carbon, there are these unusual isotopes of carbon-14, right? They're floating all throughout the air and the atmosphere. Now, all living this things contain cow. a trace of them. They are taken in when something eats, breathes, anything else. Mm -hmm. And that happens continuously throughout the life cycle. However, when the organism dies, it stops taking in new carbon, right? Which means it stops taking in new carbon-14. Same thing yeah. happens to a painting. You've stopped putting paint on the thing, no more carbon. Okay. Carbon-14 is an unstable isotope. And it decays at a very steady rate. Oh. It turns into nitrogen-14 and a beta particle. Beta! And because these carbon-14 atoms decay at a very steady rate, in principle, you can look at the proportional number of carbon-14 atoms and determine oh, how old something is. More carbon-14, newer painting. Mm -hmm. Less carbon-14, older painting. Right. In 1985, using this technique, they caught a guy, Robert Trotter. B. who forged a Sarah Hon painting. Ah, far too many carbon-14 atoms. <laughs> Lock them up, boys. <laughs> but there are even simpler methods of testing the age of a pigment. Three Jackson Pollock paintings were found to be fake Damn. when it was determined that the pigments on the canvas weren't sold until the 1960s. That's crazy. But Pollock was dead by 1956. Okay. I trust Nowadays, you. there are huge pigment libraries that can be easily cross-referenced. So that shows the year a pigment was first introduced yeah. and what year it stopped oh, being used. that's really cool. For example, anything that has titanium white has to have been produced in the last 80 years. Right. I'm going to be honest with you, kid. Michelangelo never <laughs> used the <laughs> yellow Crayola. <laughs> X-rays. Now, you can blast this thing with some radiation okay. and look behind the painting to see what's underneath. Oh. For example, right. did the artist do a sketch first? Maybe this is painted over something else. If Which you look behind more. the Mona Lisa, you can actually see that she had a much larger head once. <laughs> although maybe it just shrunk with age. And you can see that veil much more easily. Also, if you x-ray even further, you can see her fully formed skeleton. <laughs> the the art forgers of today are a wily bunch. Mm. Forgers can source old canvases from the correct period. <laughs> they can use error-matching pigments. Even the carbon dating can be a bit unreliable. Heck, even the x-rays can be bullshit. Right. As forgers take into account that their work will be x-rayed, as they do a sort of fake painting right. or sketch first, and then paint the next version on top. All right, kid. I'll give you $20,000 for this. <laughs> he got or scammed. a shiny new bottle of Ritalin. Oh, my God. <laughs> Works every time. Damn. Because he shook it. Um, you know, we had this big debate in class and I was highly unpopular when I stated the obvious fact that if you have to do all of this work, it's worth the money. Yeah, I think so. It's very unpopular. It's it's kind of like uh, how, what, who is it? But like a lot of, I can't remember if it's specifically Louis Vuitton, mm -hmm. but a lot of like designers won't mm -hmm. take like returns and stuff because right. the fakes are so good. Yep, they, they can't, can't tell. tell. But if the fake is that good, just use the fake. I got shunned so hard, I'm still <laughs> shrinking from being shouted down. But I was right. You have <laughs> taken my soul, but not my position. <laughs> yeah, I just, I was like, yeah, this is, 
very clearly, if you take it to a scientist, yeah. there was another method they were using where they were scanning old paintings that were like oil paintings mm -hmm. and like scanning the ridges of them. Right. See if the yeah, ridges yeah, yeah. just match. And what happened is fakers just use that to scam them even better. Right. Because they have a literal grid of what exactly it's supposed to look like. Yeah. So it got worse. <laughs> so great. So now I'm like, these guys are cooking, y'all. I mean, if it's that good, <laughs> it's that look, cause Take look. Him his money. Cause look, if I look at a, a real one and I look at a fake one, my ass is not gonna know the fucking difference, bro. Yeah. I'm not gonna know the difference. And if the general populace isn't going to know the difference, does it really matter? Right. I mean, you, you, you're getting too high for my tax bracket if you start caring. This section is about Shakespeare. Wow, that would make so much sense for it to be in the theater nice. video on the main channel. Right, but you but you got distracted last this time. This dude showed up Big head. and changed the game. Shakespeare. Here's the thing, though. Will we basically know nothing about him. Right. First, we don't know what he looked like. Apparently there are two best guesses. <laughs> One right. is from this Consistent. engraving on a first folio. <laughs> But that wasn't put together until seven years after he was already dead. Uh -huh. One of his peers, Ben Johnson, knew him though and said, Yeah, it's pretty close. Damn. Ben did not like his <laughs> head. Said, I like the forehead size. Make sure that it gets bigger in the next copy. Bro. He had a huge cranium. Bro, him and Ben had beef. Yeah. Ben yeah. wanted to sleep with that Anne girl that Shakespeare was in love with. <laughs> you might have won the battle, but I won the war. Fat head. <laughs> Maybe. The second is a bust that was made for his grave. <laughs> there are a bunch of others, but they weren't commissioned by Shakespeare himself. They weren't done while he was alive, and he didn't exactly stop to pose for them. But these are the ones we most recognize him by. <laughs> this includes Chandos, which is probably the most recognizable. So this could be him, or this could be some completely other dude. <laughs> Or it could be an idealized version. Now, we also don't know exactly when he was born or when he died right. or how he died. Right. His birthday is celebrated on the 23rd of April, but there's no record of that. that shit. And then he died on the 23rd of April as well. So he died on his birthday. Damn. Odd coincidence. <laughs> but we know that he did marry a lady named Anne Hathaway. Hathaway. Yes, yeah. same as Catwoman, but this one was the original. We also don't even really know how to spell his name. There are tons of different signatures by him, but they're practically all spelt differently. Yep. And let's not even get started on the conspiracies of whether or not he really wrote his plays. The son of two illiterate parents from a lower class neighborhood suddenly becoming the world's greatest playwright? Hmm, not bit suspicious. Play. Because he's poor. <laughs> all the, They're just because he's poor. Yeah. And slightly illiterate, but also poor. Nobody can spell, though. Not his fault. Right. Also, whether he was gay, or worse, whether he was foreign, or what the hell is going on with his grave? So if you go to the Holy Trinity Church in Stratford, there is his grave. There right. he lays, but there is an engraving above him. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he who moves my bones. Cursed, you see. You're not allowed to dig him up. So everyone is super spooked out by the curse, and they refuse to dig him up. So, archaeologists instead have done radar scans. Turns out, There's... his head is missing. Ooh. What the he fuck? was grave robbed in 1794. Ah, so we can't yeah. even reconstruct him That's that cool. way. Yeah. And they won't open it up for DNA tests. So, it's likely that we will never know the truth. The government is hiding something. <laughs> the point is, Shakespeare stole a theatre at one point. Okay, quick Shakespeare moment. Okay. In 1599. Shakespeare was working as a playwright with his acting troupe called The Lord Chamberlain's Men. Now, they were leasing out a theater in Shoreditch called The Theater. <laughs> Creative name. Anyway, they had a disagreement with their landlord, Giles Allen. Giles like revoked Giles. their lease. Shakespeare and the Chamberlain's Men were not very happy about that, but they had no option but to walk away. But a few days later, in the dead of night, they came back. Now, the group met up and just outside what? the theatre, and they had bribed the watchman to look the other way. Then, with daggers and tools in hand, they broke into the theatre. 
Now, they weren't there to kill John. Oh. And they weren't there to steal stuff from the theater. So what are you no. there for? They were there to rob the theater. They uh, tore down what? the entire oh, building, the... piece by piece. Bro. And they started carting it all. Bro, what? Bro, <laughs> what? You know what? I 100% believe that happened. <laughs> That William Shakespeare and a group of fucking goons was like, was cut the bitch down then. Revolt my lease? <laughs> Guess what, homie? The lease is only for the land, not for the building. Oh I'm going to take the fucking building. Yeah, oh I believe they did that. I believe they did that. Play me. Play the me. warehouse. Yeah. From there, they ferried it across I the town heard this before. and over to Southwark. With the materials yeah. that they stole, they constructed the theater? Globe Theatre. Yeah, I think I remember hearing And this. there it stood for the next 14 years until it burnt down. Damn. Oops. It was a performance of Henry VIII mm. and a prop cannon was involved. Don't worry about that. But then it was rebuilt. But then in 1642, it was shut down again. Oh. But in 1997, a recreation of the Globe Theatre oh, was made dope. once more. And in London, you can visit it today. That's as really long cool. as you can avoid oh, being right. stabbed. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. All right. And now for the best section of all. Okay. The end? Come on, people. We're ready to shoot. Where's the pizza box with the hole in it? Oh, Who is that? Oh. That's a porn reference. Whose voice is that, fool? Not fucking... What's wrong with you? Well, actually, it's a female director of porn, which is actually pretty progressive, I feel like. Hey, shout out to... Oh. Yeah, my, that's my cue. I gotta go. And cut.